Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asian Newsland and heard the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 30th of April. India summons Canada in war over pro Khalistan slogans at Trudeau's event. Sri Lanka faces tough road ahead despite economic wins says IMF. South Asia battles searing heatwave. And now for all the details. A day after pro Khalistani slogans were raised at an event attended by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, India on Monday summed the country's Deputy High Commissioner Stuart Wheeler and lodged a protest with him over the incident. India's foreign ministry described the pro-Khalistani slogans as disturbing and said it illustrated once again the political space that has been given in Canada to separatism, extremism and violence. He said their continued expressions not only impact India-Canada relations but also encourage a climate of violence and criminality in Canada to the detriment of its own citizens. Bilateral ties deteriorated after PM Trudeau alleged India's role in the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar last year. Furthermore, after Washington Post named an Indian official for allegedly plotting the assassination of Khalistani terrorist Gurpatwan Singh Pannu, India said the report makes unwarranted and unsubstantiated imputations on a serious matter. The Post reported on Monday, a RNAW official identified as Vikram Yadav was involved in the assassination plot of Pannu in the US and the move was approved by the then Indian spy agency chief Samant Goyal. India has said there is an investigation going on into the security concerns shared by the US government on networks of organized criminals, terrorists and others. Pannu wanted in India on terror charges holds dual citizenship of the US and Canada. Moving on, India's newly appointed Chief of Naval Staff, Admiral Dinesh Kumar Tripathi said on Tuesday that his singular focus was to keep the naval force prepared to win wars at end from sea whenever called upon. Tripathi succeeded Admiral R. Hari Kumar of the Indian Navy who retired after serving as the 25th Naval Chief. He was also accorded a guard of honour before participating in a red laying ceremony to pay respects to fallen soldiers at the National War Memorial in New Delhi. Tripathi has served the Indian Navy for almost four decades in an illustrious and celebrated career. The Indian Navy should remain operationally ready at all times to deter potential adversaries at sea in peace and to win the war at and from the sea when asked to do so. This will remain my singular focus. India has deployed at least a dozen warships in the Gulf of Aden and the North Arabian Sea since December, which enables it to assist vessels east of the Red Sea, where the navies of several countries, including the United States, are trying to secure shipping routes under attack from Yemen's Houthi militants. Farmers in Pakistan on Monday took to street to register their protests against what they call as government unfair policy for procurement of wheat, a report. Scores of farmers were held in Pakistan's Lahore on Monday evening as they took to the streets to register their protest against the unfair wheat procurement policy. The protesters, led by Kisan Ittehad Pakistan, were trying to march towards the provincial assembly but were intercepted by a heavy contingent of Punjab police, according to the Dawn. While the Kisan Ittehad Pakistan's leaders have claimed that more than 250 farmers have been arrested by the provincial police, authorities have disputed the numbers, saying only 46 protesters are in their custody. Farmers from Punjab, the breadbasket of Pakistan, have been protesting the inordinate delay in the purchase of grain. They are also opposed to the government's decision to reduce the provincial procurement quota from over 4 million tonnes to 2.3 million tonnes. The protesters have gained support from opposition parties PTI and Jamaat-e-Islami, 
who staged a protest in solidarity with the farmers outside the assembly. However, the Maryam Nawaz-led provincial government of Punjab has downplayed the situation and said it's in contact with real representatives of the farmers. A four-day door-to-door anti-polio campaign was kicked off authorities in Taliban-ruled Afghanistan on Monday. In line with the campaign, 10.72 million children under five will receive doses of anti-polio vaccines and a supplementary dose of vitamin A that will be provided to children aged six months to five years. There have been no reported cases of wild polio virus in Afghanistan for five consecutive months, the World Health Organization reported in March. Vaccination campaigns in Afghanistan and Pakistan often face challenges due to conspiracy theories that polio vaccines cause infertility or that vaccinators are spies. Before seizing power in August 2021, the Taliban had banned door-to-door -door vaccinations in areas they controlled. However, the United Nations has now successfully negotiated with them to resume the vaccination program across the country. Sri Lanka's performance under the IMF-supported program has been pretty good, the global lender said on Tuesday. Addressing media after the release of the IMF's regional economic outlook for Asia and Pacific, the IMF's regional director, Krishna Srinivasan, said the bailout program for Sri Lanka is working and delivering results. Sri Lanka faced a difficult challenge when they embarked on this program, he said in response to a query on Sri Lanka. However, he warned the island nation will have to stick to the IMF program so that it can make a durable exit from the crisis. Sri Lanka plunged into its worst financial crisis after its foreign exchange reserve fell to record lows in early 2022, leaving it unable to pay for essentials including fuel, cooking gas and medicine. Following talks with the government along with assurances about its plan to repair the country's finances, the IMF has approved a $3 billion bailout for the island nation. Uh, the program is delivering on what's expected to do. Uh, growth is picking up, inflation is coming down, reserves are going up, but the, wor the, the road ahead is still difficult. So you have to keep uh, pursuing with those reforms, both on the fiscal side and in terms of the structural reform side, including on governance and reducing corruption. Rising temperatures in South Asia, particularly India and Bangladesh, have led to health alerts and fatalities with temperatures soaring to record levels. Residents have been advised to stay indoors and stay hydrated, a report. Scorching heat in South Asia has prompted a series of health alerts among the people, also affecting their livelihoods. At least two people in India's Kotayam city died of the suspected heat wave as the country battles temperatures soaring to record levels. Temperatures across India's southern tip were expected to be higher than normal, causing authorities to issue warnings asking people to take precautions against the heat, such as staying indoors. India's weather department has predicted more heat wave days than normal between April and June, when the monsoon will hit and temperatures usually fall. As of now, we have uh, reports of uh, you know, heat-related incidents of roughly about 450 people. Uh, there are media reports of uh, few fatality, but that has not been officially reported back to us. Uh, there has to be a examination and an attribution by the health department saying that yes, this is a confirmed heat related death. Similarly, in Bangladesh, auto rickshaw drivers were seen struggling to strike a balance between finding work and resting from the heat as the country bakes in a searing heat wave for over a week. Schools in Bangladesh reopened on Sunday after being closed last week despite the latest 72-hour heat alert being extended until Tuesday, with temperatures expected to climb above 40 degrees Celsius. The authorities have been encouraging residents to stay indoors and stay hydrated. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.